to God. So I want to give a, a start with a quick background on the Gospel of Luke. Um, Luke was a travel companion of Paul. He, he wrote uh, both this Gospel and the book of Acts. And we learn about a little bit about Luke straight from the book of Acts. He traveled with Paul through several of his missionary journeys. Uh, Paul referred to him as the beloved physician. So Luke was very close to Paul's heart. And Luke's ministry was, was mainly to the Gentiles, you know, as was the Apostle Paul's. Uh, of course, they ministered to Jews too, uh, but their main outreach was to the Gentiles. So this Gospel of Luke uh, is kind of geared towards reaching the Gentiles. Uh, for example, in, in chapter 2, uh, Luke gives an account of a man who was in the temple. A man named Simon or Simeon, however you want to pronounce it. He was in the temple when the baby Jesus was brought by Mary for uh, the dedication according to the law. And this, uh, this man, Simon, he prophesied when Jesus came into the temple uh, according to the law of Moses. This man prophesied and he said this about Christ. He said that he was a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. And that was in chapter 2. So it, it, it's, this gospel starts off uh, with uh, telling us that Jesus is not only the Savior of the Jews, but He's the Savior of the Gentiles. He came to save the whole world. Glory be to God. And, uh, this man prophesied, and it's powerful because the Lord, if you read I won't take the time to go back and read it, but uh, if, if you read it, he, he was actually promised by the Spirit that he would see the Messiah before he died. And when he held the baby Jesus in his arms, this is when he began to prophesy over the Son of God as a baby. Hallelujah. And he said, now, Lord, I can depart in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Glory be to God. Um, and then in uh, chapter 3, uh, it, it, it goes into the ministry of John the Baptist. And, uh, you know, he introduced Christ. Uh, as the Lamb of God, because Jesus came to die. That was his mission. He did many things on this earth, but he came to be crucified, because it's through his death that we're saved. And he was introduced by John the Baptist as the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. Glory be to God. And then he was baptized in water before he started his earthly ministry, speaking of Jesus, which is a type of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So before he even preached a message in type through water baptism, he said, this is why I came. I came to die. And then he was water baptized. He, uh, the Spirit came upon him, uh, anointing, a special anointing for his earthly ministry. Uh, from his water baptism, he went to the wilderness. Uh, in the beginning of chapter 4, his wilderness experience where he was tested by Satan and tempted by the devil. He moved through that experience uh, without sin and spotless in the power of the Spirit. He comes out of the wilderness and uh, this is where we find our text in the beginning of chapter 4. He's fresh out of the wilderness. He actually ministered uh, for uh, a short time throughout Galilee and then he comes through Galilee and uh, here in verse 16 we find him in Nazareth. In verse 16, he's in Nazareth. And like I said, this is the very beginning of his ministry. So let's read uh, verses 16, and I'm going to read through 19. It says this, And he came, referring to Christ, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And now this, when Jesus read this out of uh, Isaiah, this is kind of a quick uh, summary of what took place. He enters the synagogue as a visitor in Nazareth, even though they knew who he was, obviously, not only because he grew up there, but they had heard of miracles that he had already done in his ministry. So his fame was getting out there. So they knew who Jesus was. He was a miracle worker. Um, you know, he was doing mighty deeds and his fame was spreading. So he shows up in the synagogue and as the custom was, uh, he stands up basically telling, telling the ruler of the synagogue. When he stood up, he's saying, I want to teach today. So he stands up. The ruler of the synagogue says, come on, uh, calls him forth. And he hands him the book of Isaiah. Jesus didn't ask for it. He handed it to him. 
So this tells us that this was where this synagogue was in their weekly reading. Every Sabbath they would read from the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets. They would move through it chronologically most of the time. And at this specific time, they handed Jesus the book of Isaiah. And when he opened up the portion that he was supposed to read for that day, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This was a messianic prophecy given through the prophet Isaiah 700 years, around 700 years before the birth of Christ. And Jesus said a few scriptures later, he said, this day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. So what he said to this, 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 group, of, uh, this group of Jews in the synagogue, he said, I am the Messiah. Amen. He claimed, he was all right, he said it, he said, I am the Messiah. This scripture is fulfilled today. He's saying, I am the fulfillment of this scripture. I am the anointed one. I am the one that God has chosen. His spirit is upon me. He stood up and said it. He said, I am. See, he's the only one who could preach about himself. <laughs> Glory yeah. to God. He's the only one who is worthy to preach about himself. Yeah. So I'm preaching about him. That's what we're called Amen. to do. He's the only one who can say, I am the resurrection and the life. He pointed to himself. Yeah. We point to him. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. And he stood up and he said, I am the fulfillment. Hallelujah. Yeah, go ahead. I am the fulfillment of this scripture. Glory be to God. He has anointed me. He has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So I want to minister this morning for a few minutes, glory to God, on the uh, title that I've given this message, The Anointing of Christ. The Anointing of Christ. And there's three different arenas, so to speak, of the anointing that I want to touch on that Jesus refers to in the Scripture. And I'm going to stay in verse 18 for the remainder of this message. Uh, I'll bring in other Scriptures to correlate, but this is where I'm getting my main text from in verse 18. Uh, Jesus, there was three different arenas, so to speak, or three different reasons why Jesus says he was given the anointing. Now, he was anointed. Everything Jesus did in his ministry, he did through the anointing, the power of the Spirit. Now, I just want to touch really quick on the, uh, on the anointing and what it is. See, when he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me, the Jews would have known exactly what he was talking about because they, they knew what the anointing was. Uh, I'll give you three different types in the Old Testament through which they knew what the anointing meant. Kings, priests, and prophets, they were all anointed. They were anointed with oil when they came into their office. For, for an example, uh, I'll use the king as, as my main example. King David, when Samuel the prophet received from the Lord that David was chosen to be king, he was told to go anoint David with oil. Now, oil was a type of the Holy Spirit. When Samuel came to anoint David as king, he anointed him with oil. And then after he anointed him with oil, the scripture says that the Spirit of God left Saul. It departed from Saul, who was the king at that time, but he was a man of the flesh and not of faith. God chose David to be king. So when he was anointed with oil by Samuel the prophet, the Spirit of the Lord left Saul and came upon David. The Spirit of God. So the Jews would have known exactly what the anointing was. Under the Old Testament and even under the New, at times, oil is used to anoint people. Why? It's a type of the Holy Spirit. It represents the unction or the power of the Holy Spirit. So the anointing was for a specific purpose. It was the Spirit of God. That's what the anointing was. It was the Spirit and the power of God for a specific task, for a specific office. The king was to rule and reign under the anointing. The priest was anointed to lead the people in sacrifice and intercession. And the prophet was anointed to speak for God to the people. So the anointing has a purpose and a place. Jesus was king, priest, and prophet. Amen. He fulfilled it all. He was anointed to do it all. So everything he did in his earthly ministry, including his death, was by the anointing, was by the Spirit. For by the eternal Spirit, he offered himself up to God. So everything he did in his earthly ministry, he did as a man. But he did it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so there's a, lot to talk, there's a lot to preach on on the anointing. So I want to narrow it down in this scripture to three different arenas or three different areas that Christ operated in the anointing. And those three areas are this. Preaching, healing, and deliverance. Preaching, healing... In deliverance. See, Christ came to preach, Christ came to heal, and Christ came to deliver. Amen. I said the anointing was for him to preach, to heal, and to deliver. And when we come in the name of Christ, we need to preach, we need to heal, Amen. and we need to deliver. We need to preach what he preached, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. We're going to, we need to heal by the anointing and deliver by the anointing. Amen. It's all done through the, through the anointing, Amen. and it's all done through the message. 
Amen. See, that's the key. He said, I came to preach, Amen. to preach right. healing and deliverance. Yeah. Amen. It was through his through faith in his word, word. Amen. through faith in his word that the anointing would flow. And Jesus said this in verse 18. He said to preach the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So this is this is he said, this is why I came. This is what the anointing is for to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, preach the gospel, that phrase, preach the gospel, that's one Greek word. And it means, simply means, it means to, like we would say, to evangelize or to announce the good news. To preach the gospel, it's one Greek word. Now, I'm not going to try to pronounce the Greek word because you know, I'll, I'll just stumble all over the place. It won't help anybody, but it's, it's one Greek word and I'll, the meaning will help you. It means to announce or proclaim the good news. To announce or to proclaim the good news. So this is what he came. He said, I came to preach. Hallelujah. He yeah. said he, 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 didn't, he didn't shy around it. He didn't pretend like he didn't have the anointing. He told him. He said, I got the anointing. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He didn't shy away from it. Glory yeah. be to God. You know, and it wasn't pride. It was humility. He said, I have the anointing. See, false pride says, oh, you know, I, I'll, I'll do my best. Maybe if the anointing shows up. No, no, no. Jesus said, I have the anointing. This morning, I got the anointing. Amen. God told me he would anoint me to preach his gospel. Amen. And if you preach the right message, glory to God, the anointing will be there. Yeah. Without the anointing, nobody gets blessed. Hallelujah. Nobody gets touched. Amen. You need to know and believe Amen. that the Spirit of God is upon you to preach. He said, I have been anointed to preach the gospel, to preach the good news. He said, I have the Spirit, and by the Spirit I will proclaim the gospel. And see, under the, uh, under the synagogue and how, the, how everything worked, um, what, what would normally take place when someone, a rabbi, would teach, they would read the scripture, so he would read, you know, Isaiah 61, and then they would read commentary about what other rabbis before them had written about that scripture. That's not what Jesus did. He read the scripture, which was inspired by God, and then he preached on it under the anointing of the Spirit. And the people said, we have never heard somebody speak with this authority. You know, what grace does he speak with? They had never heard somebody preach under the anointing. He didn't just read a dead letter written by a dead rabbi. He stood up under the power of the Spirit. And he said, I have come. He said, he sent me. I have been sent. The Father sent the Son to preach, to proclaim, to heal, and to deliver. He said, the Spirit of God is upon me. And I'm going to preach in this place today. That's what Jesus said. He stood up in a dead synagogue. It was spiritually dead. He said, the Spirit of God is upon me. And I'm I'm about to preach in this place. I'm going to preach healing and I'm going to preach deliverance. Yeah. People are going to get healed and people are going to get set free. Glory to God. He wasn't afraid and he didn't doubt it because he knew he had the spirit. Glory be to God. He didn't just do it as a man. He did it fully man and fully God by the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, I have God's spirit and I'm going to preach. You're going to get set free and you're going to get healed if you believe what I'm saying. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now we have to understand what he preached. We have to understand what he preached. He told his disciples, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. My Lord. That's a powerful statement. That's what he preached. You need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And after he said that, it says many disciples left him. They, they ceased to follow him. He preached his own death. Like I said, that's why he came. He was introduced as the lamb. He came to die. Yes, he came to heal and save and set free, but it's all done through his death. Glory to God. When he healed and he cast out demons and he preached in his earthly ministry, it was all to testify as signs to who he was, first of all, the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Anointed One. That's what the Messiah means. That's what Christ means in the Greek. It means the Anointed One. The chosen one. So when he stood up and said, I am the Messiah, he's saying, I am the anointed one. Not only do I have the anointing, not only do I have the spirit, I am the anointed one. See, if we operate in the anointing, it's not because we're worthy of it. It's because we're in the anointed one. Yeah. See, he's not a selfish God. He wants to share his anointing. Yes. Glory be to God. If you'll say yes to what he preached, he'll share a little bit of that with you. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He'll share it with you. He even said, greater works will you do than he even did. He's not a selfish God. He wants to share his anointing. And he preached and he proclaimed his, his own death. He said, this is why the Son of Man has come. For this hour, he said, whosoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus preached death. You have to die in order to find life. 
That's what he preached. He said, you're sinners and, you're, and the wages of sin is death. You need to die in me. I'm going to die for you. If you believe what I'm saying, if you believe what I've come to accomplish, then you will have life and life more abundant. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. See, he came to bring life, but the only way that he can impart life to a sinner who deserves death is to die in your place. He didn't just preach with word. He preached in life and deed. He preached through his death and in his resurrection, God declared him that he was who he said he was. When he raised him from the dead, he said, this is my son. And he defeated death and hell. Glory be to God. And now he has the keys to hell and death in his right hand. He has the keys to hell and death. So if you're looking at death and hell, if you're a sinner and you're on your way to an eternal hell, there is one who has the keys who will let you out. Glory be to God. There is one who came to set you free. He came to preach. He came to heal. And he came to deliver. I said the anointing of Christ has been given to preach. To heal and to deliver. And he's no longer on this earth. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. But the anointing of Christ, glory to God, is still in the earth. And he's still preaching. I said he's still preaching. I said he's still preaching. He's still healing. And he's still delivering. Glory be to God. He's doing it from heaven through his chosen servants. He's doing it through you. All who will believe. Whosoever. Whosoever will. Whosoever will. Whosoever will come and drink, come and drink from the water of life freely. I said you can have life and life more abundant if you'll just believe in what he preached. If you'll just believe in his healing. If you'll just believe in his deliverance. He's still healing. He's still preaching. He's still delivering. Glory to God. What do you need? He's still healing. If you need healing, he will still heal you. If you need deliverance, he will still deliver you. I said Christ came. I said he came, he came yeah. to preach, he came to heal, and he came to deliver. What do you need? I said he was sent, he came, and he said it is finished. He didn't leave it halfway done, he finished the job. I said he preached, he healed, and he delivered. Yeah. Satan tried to tempt him, and he moved through spotless, without wrinkle, without sin. He offered himself up to God by the Spirit. The anointing of Christ, glory to God. The anointing of Christ cannot fail. Hallelujah. And if you're in him, I said if you're in him, no sickness, no disease, hallelujah, no bondage can hold you down. He came to preach. Hallelujah. He came to preach. Glory to God. What do we need to do? We need to preach. We need to preach. We need to preach that Christ heals. Christ delivers. Hallelujah. Christ will set you free. That's why he came. That's why he came. Glory to God. Glory to God. He came to preach. He came to preach. He stood up in the midst of a dead congregation. No one was clapping. No one was shouting. But he still preached. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't preach for the clap, but you can clap. I don't preach for the shout, but go ahead and shout. I preach because I have. Hallelujah. Jesus heals. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to look at the context of what he said here. Hallelujah. Mm, my Lord is so good. Hallelujah. Jesus, my Lord, is so good. If you'll get a hold of this. He said to heal. Now, this word heal, I want to read it in the definition of uh, Zodiades, which is 
a Greek uh, uh, concordance and uh, gives you the Greek definitions of words. And this is the uh, definition it says to heal. It says metaphorically of moral disease. You're going to get this. To heal or save from the consequences of sin. Of moral disease. He said heal the broken hearted. Yeah. See, in the context of this verse, he's not talking about your body. That's right. Yeah. So for a moment, I just want you to get your mind off your body. I know you can be painful. I know we need healing in our bodies oftentimes. But uh, he didn't come to heal you physically until he heals you spiritually. Amen. I said, I believe in physical healing. I believe Jesus heals the body. But I'm talking about the context of the scripture from mom. Um, I want to state that again. I believe Jesus heals physically. Amen. If you need a physical healing today, I'll believe with you. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. I'll lay hands on you and I'll believe that he'll heal you. Glory to God. I believe in physical healing. But in this context, he says, to heal the broken heart. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is the priority of God. You want your heart. If you give him your heart, he'll take care of your body. Right. Yes, yes. You know? Amen. Broken hearted, it means this. It means a heart that has been crushed and broken by sin. My Lord. So we came to preach the gospel to the poor in spirit, empty of spirit, yeah, yeah. and to heal the brokenhearted, those who have been crushed by sin, my Lord. So you have to be empty of self, poor in spirit, and you have to be crushed by the power of sin in order to receive what Christ came to do. Sin. My Lord, that's good preaching right there. Yeah. You have to be destroyed by sin. Now, let me, let me clarify this. That doesn't mean you have to go partake in all kinds of sinful activity. That's not what I'm talking about. I said you have to allow the Spirit of God to show you how sinful your heart really is. You don't have to, you don't have to partake in it. But you have to allow, only He can do this. Because man is prideful in and of himself. Man won't admit it without the Spirit of God. Without conviction. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Move and convict. Hallelujah. If, he, if you let Him move on your heart and convict you of your sin, He will do the crushing. He will do the crushing. Hallelujah. And if you've walked with God for any amount of time, you know what I'm talking about. But there's a purpose for the crushing. My Lord. Glory to God. Because that's the only way that He can bring healing. Yes. My Lord, right. if you let him crush you, he'll heal you. Because the problem is we're already crushed. We're in pieces. We're broken by sin. We just don't know it. But if we'll let him show it to us, and that hurts. See, when we come to Christ, you know, we think we're, oh, we're born again. We're saved. No, I'm ready to go, Lord. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to do this and do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Lord. Yes. We skip the wilderness experience. That's right. I told you about it in the beginning of chapter 4. He went through the wilderness experience. The Son of God did being tested and tempted by the devil. Now, he never entered into sin. That's the difference between me and him. I'm a sinner, he's not. That's why he saves me. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So he never entered in. No, we're going to stumble. We're going to fall. But if we'll move through that wilderness experience Amen. and hold on to the one who never did stumble, yes. glory to God, hold on to the one who never did fall, when we, when we walk out of that wilderness, we'll walk out just like He did, That's in right. the power of the Spirit, in His righteousness. Amen. God will look at us like we never did stumble, Amen. like we never did fall. He'll even clean up the big mess that we left behind us yeah. in the wilderness in the meantime. Yeah. I said, sometimes we can make a mess in the wilderness. Sometimes we can fall and stumble and make a mess of our family family, of our personal lives, of our finances, of our physical body, we can do destruction. I know I, my body took a toll on drugs and alcohol big time, and uh, I still suffer from some of the things that happened to me when I was using all the time. You know, my shoulder's never been the same. You know, when I was using all the time, you know, I got in a, a fist fight or something, and my shoulder came out of socket, and it's still not the same, you know? And, uh, you know, honestly, I don't even really care. It doesn't bother me that much, so I don't really, it doesn't, I don't really care about it, but... If it did bother me a lot, then I'd even believe it for him. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, things can happen when we're in the world. That's what I'm talking about. When we're in the wilderness even. Even as Christians. That's right. And we'll make a mess. We'll Amen. do something. Uh, we'll affect, you know, whatever. Our families, our bodies. But Jesus came to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came to heal. And if you'll we'll move through that in faith, he'll bring healing to Hallelujah. every situation that needs it. Amen. Family. Yes. Your heart. Yes. Your, see, but first you want your heart. That's, this is what I really want to focus on. This is what I felt like. The Lord was really dealing with me uh, yesterday about personally, my life. If I'll let him heal me, my heart, that's why he came, to heal the brokenhearted, then, then he'll heal through me. He'll heal situations through me. See, he wants to pour his healing power into you and then use you. 
as a vessel for healing yes. in the situations that need it. My Lord, glory to God. I say he wants to use you to heal your family. Yes. He wants to use you to save your family. Yes. He wants to use you to heal every situation that's been broken by the consequences of sin. Sin kills, destroys. That's what this devil does and that's what sin does. Sometimes it's the devil, sometimes it's just us. Amen. Sometimes it's just our own sin. Amen. It steals and it kills and it destroys. But Jesus heals. Amen. Jesus heals. Hallelujah. Jesus heals. Healing means to make whole. Hallelujah. To make whole. See, Amen. what sin does is it separates us from God. When Adam broke, when Adam sinned and walked away from God, he was, he was incomplete. His fellowship was incomplete. He was no longer whole. Sin broke that fellowship, broke that anointing. It broke the anointing of Christ. Sin breaks that anointing. But if we'll stay in faith, I said if we'll stay in the faith, Amen. in the faith, then no sin, no devil, no demon can break that anointing. Glory be to God. Even your own foolishness can't break the power of that anointing if we'll believe what he preached. If we believe in who he was and what he's done, nothing can break that anointing. I said, not even your own foolishness. Glory be to God. See, the Lord can deal with foolishness. He can deal with sin, but he can't deal with unbelief. If you believe him, he'll clean up that mess. He'll clean up your sin. He'll make you whole by the healing power of Christ. I said, the anointing of Christ heals. All we need to do is believe. Is believe. Jesus said, only believe. Only believe. How many times did he say, your faith has made you whole? Let it be according to your faith. Hallelujah. Let it be according to your faith. As an illustration, in Mark chapter 2, you probably read the story before. Uh, me, uh, a guy with palsy is, is brought to Jesus. Now, at this time, Jesus is teaching and preaching in a household. And there's so many people around that this sick guy with palsy can't get to him. The crowd's too big. It's too many. So him and his buddies climb up on the roof. They carry him in a bed upon the roof. Break a hole in the roof. And lower him down right before Christ. He's saying, I got to get to Christ. I got to get this healing. I said, it doesn't matter what it looks like in the natural. Glory be to God. Sometimes you just have to do whatever it takes to get to Christ. Sometimes you get to fight through the crowd. You get to fight through the doubt. You have to fight through the fear. You have to fight through the unbelief. You have to fight through the evil one. You have to fight sometimes to get to Christ. In the natural, it might look impossible. How can a lame man fight through a crowd to get to one person preaching in the midst of a household? He said, I don't know how I'm going to get in, but I'm getting in. Bring me up to the roof. They dug a hole in the roof and they lowered him down. You know what Jesus said? You know what Jesus said? I'm talking about healing the heart now. You know what Jesus said? He said, your sins are forgiven. So the guy shows up, and Jesus didn't even heal his body at first. Jesus didn't even, he said, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. That's why he came. He forgives your sins, and he heals your heart. Hallelujah. The broken heart that has been broken by the consequences of sin. He said, your sins are forgiven. And then the Pharisees said, see, the whole time, Jesus knew, hallelujah, Jesus knew that he was going to heal the man's body. Amen. He knew it. He knew, the, he, knew the guy wanted, he knew the guy wanted physical healing. You know, he knows what you have need of. He knows the pain. He knows the hurt. And he knew this man with palsy wanted physical healing. But he didn't give him physical healing. He said, your sins are forgiven. He gave him something so much better than physical healing. Because the body will perish. And glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. From dust we came into dust we shall return. The body will perish. But when your sins are forgiven, one day he'll give you a new body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Resurrected body. So Jesus knew this guy wanted physical healing, but he gave him something better yeah. according to his faith. Yeah. If you'll come with faith, see sometimes it just takes problems and consequences and a broken heart because of what it looks like in the natural to come to Christ. But whatever it takes, whatever it takes, he yeah. just wants you to come. Yeah. He just wants you to come. Yeah. Bring your problems. Amen. Bring your sickness. Bring your bring your bondages. Yeah. Bring it all. Yeah. And when you come to him, he's gonna he's not only gonna heal you of your sickness, he's gonna heal you of your sin. Glory be to God. He doesn't want just your sickness. He wants your sin. Glory to God. That's what his blood dealt with. And he said, your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. And didn't heal him physically. And the Pharisees stood up and said, you know, who, what do you mean? Who can, how can he forgive sin? Who gave this guy authority? You know, he's just talking. He's just talking loud. He can't forgive sin. And then Jesus perceived what they were talking about. And he said, hallelujah. He said, what's easier for me to say? 
he's forgiven of his sin or tell this guy to stand up and walk. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes, you know, it's hard for us to believe what Christ has done on the inside because we can't see it with the physical eye. But Jesus wants to confirm his word in the physical. That's what physical healing is for. It's to confirm what he does in the spirit. He said, what's, he said, what's easier? For me to tell you that your sins are forgiven or for me to heal your broken body? See, he, what he was doing was, he was telling you, he was saying, it's, it's more difficult for me to forgive sins. He's not saying I can't, but he's saying that's why I came. I came to forgive sin. He said the body... I can heal the body with one word. He said, stand up and walk. Take your bed and go home. Yeah. The guy stood up and went home. He said, I came to forgive sin. And I'll show you that I can forgive sin by healing your body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, we preach that Jesus heals spiritually. If Jesus, Jesus heals the broken heart, if Jesus forgives for sin, if Jesus breaks the power over sin, then we'll start seeing sick bodies get healed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I believe for the greatest movement of God's healing this earth has ever seen. I believe people to get made whole spiritually, first of all. If people start getting born again, then people will start getting healed physically. Hallelujah. Jesus wants us to bring our sin. If we bring our sin, He'll deal with the consequences. He'll deal with the result. He'll deal with the sickness and the bondage and the broken families and the hurt. He'll take care of all that. But first, He wants to take care of your sin. First, He wants to say, your sins are forgiven. And once He does that, He'll say, you think that was difficult? Now stand up and walk. Glory be to God. Once he deals with your sin, then he gives you another miracle. But he's telling you, that's not the greatest miracle. Your greatest miracle is not healing of your physical body. The greatest miracle is the fact that my blood has taken away your sin. And now we can have fellowship. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to deal with your sin. Glory to God. Think about the Apostle Paul for just a moment. Think about him for just a moment. He spent his entire ministry broken in his physical body. Read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It talks about shipwrecks and getting beaten and stripes and suffering. And you, I mean, he went through it. And when he was beaten, it was not, they didn't just smack him around a little bit. They tore the flesh off his back. 39 stripes by the Jews with a whip that had five tails on it. Sometimes tied in with bone and glass and rocks. Hit him 39 times. Grown men. Grown man. This is what he did. And when he went to the synagogue, he knew most of the time he was going to get a beating. He went in anyway. Amen. Glory to God. Because he knew Jesus heals. Yes. Jesus heals. Amen. Jesus heals. He didn't care about his physical body. Glory be to God. He knew what he had in the spirit. And he knew one day he was going to get a new body. But right now, I'm healed spiritually. So whatever happens in this physical body, let it be for the glory of God. If you want me to be sick, I'll be sick. If you want to heal me, then heal me. But I want my sins forgiven. Glory be to God. And if you come to Jesus with that heart, that he, if you want him to deal with your sin, you will receive your physical healing. Glory to God. He doesn't want to leave you in pain and suffering. He's going to deal with all the consequences of sin. But sin is the root. Sin is the reason why he came. That's right. He didn't come for the physical body. He Amen. came for the inner man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The third point, deliverance. Jesus came to preach. He came to heal. And he came to deliver. Hallelujah. Deliverance, it means freedom, liberty. Seventeen times this word is used in the Greek in the New Testament. And twelve out of those seventeen times it's directly followed by the words of sin. So deliverance is directly tied into sin. Deliverance from sin. He didn't say deliverance from your circumstance. Glory to God. See, you know, this is something that was kind of made real to me when I did prison ministry for a little bit. I didn't do it long, uh, but I've been to death row and you're ministering to guys that will not get out of prison. They have killed somebody, so they're, they're, they're going to die in prison. They're not getting out. So if you preach that Jesus came to, to get you out of the physical prison, then your gospel is foolishness. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they did get out of the physical prison, what's that going to do for them if they die lost? That's right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Jesus came, glory to God, to preach deliverance, freedom from sin. When you tell that man who's dying in his cell, glory to God, that Jesus saved you from your sin, that he can forgive you of your murder, and you can have eternal glory and fellowship with God, then that cell means nothing. That cell means nothing. 
That cell means nothing. You can, you can be in prison and still be free. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I said you can be in prison and still be free. And when they hear that message, glory be to God, under the anointing of Christ, the anointing of Christ delivers from sin. Delivers from sin. And if He delivers you from sin, glory to God, He will clean up your circumstance. Amen. He will do miracles in the surroundings. See, for a long time, when the Lord puts you in a trial, and you're like, Lord, I want you to do this. Change this. I don't like this in my life. Change this. Change this. And he's saying, I want to change you. I want to change you. If you let me change you, then I'll take care of that. I'm going to take care of that. See, I can take care of that with one word. But I, you have to let me change you. You have to yield to it. And sometimes it takes horrible circumstances for us to, for us to come to Christ and say, okay, Lord, I give you my heart. I don't just want the physical blessings. I don't just want you to clean up my mess. I want you to clean up the mess that is inside. Mm -hmm. I want you to clean up the mess of my heart. I want you to change me. I want to know you. Mm -hmm. See, that's what he wants. He wants mm -hmm. to know you. He wants to deliver you from sin. And if he does, he'll clean up those circumstances. Yes, yes. See, I believe he heals physically, and I believe he'll clean up your physical circumstances. I believe that. Mm -hmm. But that's the first priority is to heal your heart and to deliver you from the bondage of sin. Glory be to God. Yeah. Glory be to God. He said this. Preach deliverance to the captives. That word captive literally means a prisoner of war. A prisoner of war. My Lord, we're in a warfare. I want you to know that. This is no game. This is life and death. This is eternity in heaven or hell. We need to wake up. We're so dumbed down with foolishness and everything in this country. Mostly, you know, riches and money and all that stuff. And I thank God for it. You know, I thank God for the blessings that he's blessed us with in this country. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes we can let those things dumb us down to what's really going on in the spirit. I said, we're in a warfare. People are dying every day. Overdosing. I mean, my generation is filled with drug addicts. Overdosing on a daily basis. If you just look at the newspaper, I mean, it's constant. Amen. You know, we're in a warfare, and they're dying and going to hell. That's something that's not real to us. This is no game. This is eternity. doesn't matter if you're young or old. We're, we're talking about eternity. This life is like a vapor. It goes by like that. Amen. And Jesus came to bring deliverance, deliverance from sin. So we don't have to fear death. Glory be to God. We don't have to fear sin. We don't have to fear the enemy. He came to bring deliverance. Amen. He came to set the captive free. If you're in captivity today, if you're a prisoner of war, if you're bound by anxiety, depression, pornography, lust, covetousness, greed, it doesn't matter. Fear, doubt, unbelief, it doesn't matter what your bondage is. If you're a prisoner of sin, then Christ came to set you free. I say he came to deliver. He came to preach. He came to heal. And he came to deliver you from your sin. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with. It, see, most, most of the struggles are right here. and nobody, nobody else even knows. Sometimes we're all spoken about it, but if you're like me, I don't, I, I don't like talking about my problems. You know, I'm real. I internalize everything. And I just walk around mad and whatever. You know what I mean? That's me. Yeah, that's me too. See, he, he knows though. He knows. That's what I love about the Lord. You don't have to talk to other people. You know, as much as it's good to fellowship and talk to your brothers and sisters, you can't depend upon anybody in this world. I've, I've learned that in the past few years. You can't depend upon anybody. If you have a problem, you need to talk to your Lord. Hallelujah. He's always there. Glory to God. He's always there. People will let you down. They will disappoint you and they will hurt you. But Jesus came to set you free. If you just come to him, he's waiting. I said he's waiting to set you free. He already paid the price. He he came to preach about his death, and then he fulfilled his word by going to the cross willingly, laying down his life, and he didn't stay in the tomb. God raised him from the dead, proclaiming him to be who he said he was, fulfilling his word of prophecy that the Messiah would come and lay down his life and be a light of revelation to the Gentiles. What is the revelation? The revelation is Jesus preaches, Jesus heals. And Jesus delivers. I said, this is the light. I said, the world is in darkness. And you were once there, bound by sin, a prisoner of war. But you heard of a man who came to preach, to heal, and to set you free. And you said yes. And what did he do? I said, what did he do? I said, he healed you. I said, he delivered you. I said, he set you free. That's why he came. His word cannot fail. Look back. Look back at what he's already done. Look back at the bondages. They have already fallen off. I said, he's not going to stop there. Your victory is not finished. I said, it is complete in Christ.
Christ, you continue to grow in victory. You never come to a place and you say, I have it all. His victory gets greater and greater every day. He wants to bring you into a greater depth of freedom. He wants to bring you into a greater depth of deliverance. If you think you're done growing, then you need to get into the presence of a holy God and He will reveal your sin. He will reveal your weakness, but He won't leave you in your pain. He won't leave you on your face. He will breathe resurrection life into you. He will raise you from the dead. Yes, He'll point out your sin. Yes, He'll show you that you're wicked. Yes, He'll show you that you need freedom. The reason is because He came. I said He'll show you that you're a prisoner. He'll show you that you're in captivity. Because He came to yes, set you yes, free. Yes. And if you won't admit uh -huh. that you're in captivity, then you'll never experience the freedom that is found in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Confess. Confess your sin and repent and receive the blood of the Holy God. And you will walk in a freedom that you have never known before. I said He came to I preach. Glory be to God. He came to preach deliverance. What do you need? What do you need? What are you bound by? What controls your life? Give it to the Son of God. Give it to the Son of God. He came. He came. The anointing. I said the anointing of Christ. The anointing of Christ. Hallelujah. He has received the promise of the Father. That is the anointing. The power of the Spirit. You know what the Spirit does? It testifies of who He is and what He's done. He's healed and He's delivered. The Spirit of God will heal and He will deliver. Why? Because Christ is lifted up in this place right now. I said He is here. He has been preached and He will heal. He will deliver. You don't have to tell me what it is. You don't have to tell your wife or your neighbor. You need to tell the one who came to, to heal and to deliver. Hallelujah. Lay it down. I said, lay it down. Let him show you what it is. There's always something. Not because he wants to keep you down and oppressed, but he wants to lift you up and set you free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of your bondage. Don't be afraid of your captivity. He came to preach deliverance, to proclaim. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. 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 All right, I'm closing in a minute. Hallelujah. Glory. He said to set at liberty them that are bruised. Them that are bruised. Bruised means oppressed. Pushed down. You know, so many Christians walk with a weight of oppression and the evil one and demonic activity. We have to have our eyes open, the light of revelation. So we can recognize that it's sin and the devil keeping us down. And Christ came, my Lord, to set you free. Amen. That's what bruise means. It means put down, oppressed, pushed down. We walk around, oh, I need this, I need that. I need this, I need that. And Christ has already provided everything you need according to life and godliness. If we'll get a hold of him, if we'll understand who he is and what he came to do, then you will be in need of nothing Amen. this world has to offer. Amen. You will be full and complete in Christ because He came with the anointing. Hallelujah. It says this in Acts 10.38. And I'm closing with this verse. If uh, you guys want to play a song, that would be good. Acts 10.38, it says this. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed by the devil. I said he healed all. All. He didn't leave one out. He healed all that were oppressed yeah. by the Amen. devil. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He healed all. With power. I said he came with power to heal all. He has power over the enemy. He has power over your sin and your flesh. You don't have to walk around broken. You don't have to walk around oppressed and pushed down. You can be healed. You can be set free. Because Christ came. I said Christ came, hallelujah, with power. The anointing of Christ is upon you. Just believe. Just believe. You don't need a preacher to lay hands on you. Although I will. You don't need someone to tell you that you need to do this and that and this. There is one who came. There is one who came. Call upon his name and he will send you the anointing. He will send you the anointing.
anointing to meet your need. Hallelujah. This altar is open. Just have a time of prayer. Just put your needs at his feet. Amen. Don't be afraid. Just put your needs at the feet of Jesus. Glory to God.